Now let's talk about what we've been doing to keep these plants happy during this last dry spell we've been having. So it's been probably two weeks since we've had a good rain. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all out there having an awesome day. It is Friday, May 12th here in South Georgia. And today we need to get caught up on our tomato trellising behind me here with our determinants and our indeterminates. I'm gonna tell you what I've been doing during this latest little dry spell to keep our tomato plants happy since we haven't been getting any rain. And then we're gonna head on over to our pepper plot, do some trellising over there as well. So let's start out with our two rows of determinate tomatoes here. And these things are growing so fast. We've already added three lines of twine for our Florida weave trellis. And we've been showing you guys each time we do that. And they've been growing so fast, they've kind of gotten ahead of us a little bit. We need to add some more twine here in a minute. Might need to add two lines of twine. But both rows are looking good. Our red snappers are looking really good. And our roadsters are looking really good. These babies are loaded up with blooms there and starting to load up with their first round of tomatoes. Now both of these are great varieties, both the Red Snapper and the Roadster. They perform well for us every year. Kind of hard to compare them at this point. Plants kind of look the same. Maybe the Red Snapper plants are a little more bushy than the Roadster plants, but the Roadster plants have larger tomatoes on them right now. Those ones I showed you earlier were on a Roadster plant. If we look here at some of these Red Snapper plants, we can see a few tiny ones in there. So it looks like Roadster may be a little earlier for us this year. So let's go ahead and run a fourth and maybe a fifth line of string on these determinate plants here. When we get up this high running string, it's a little easier because we don't have to bend down as much, but it's a little harder because the plants are so bushy. So you just have to kind of do the best you can as far as getting the string as close to a big stem in there as you can. That way everything stays tight. You can keep everything upright. If you do kind of push the plant in a little bit with the string, don't worry about that. It'll be just fine. These plants are tough and they can take it. So go down there come back and we may go ahead and add another line too all right so we got the fourth and fifth line of string ran on that row of roadster tomatoes there only ran the fourth line on that row of red snappers because we got this one plant here that i had to replant and just waiting on it to catch up a little bit i'll probably add a fifth line on those in the next day or two as fast as they've been growing now some of you may be thinking it can't be good for these plants to squish them all up with that string like that, but they'll be just fine. They like it, keeps them nice and upright, and in just a few days, they'll be bushed back out again. But having that many lines of string and keeping it nice and tight is what will hold these heavy plants up. Now let's transition from these determinate tomatoes to our indeterminates over here, which are for the most part looking pretty good. These couple plants right here at the beginning of this row are significantly larger than most of the plants in these two rows. I believe this is the rose variety, and we saw the same thing last year. This variety just outpaced the other varieties for some reason. Now besides that plant right there, which the wind broke, but it's recovering pretty nicely, all the rest of these have a string running from the top of our conduit down to the plant we have at least one clip on every plant and then the string is tied off on that bamboo stake there now like i said most of these are looking pretty good as you can see but we do have this one right here i'm not sure which variety this is it may be one of those turkey creek tomatoes anyway this one here obviously has the funk sometimes they'll grow out of the funk sometimes they won't i'm going to give it a few more days and if it still looks rough i'll just cut it there at the soil and we'll have one less tomato plant in here and that's just kind of the game we have to play down here with these indeterminate heirloom tomatoes they're not as tough not as hardy not as disease resistant as those determinants are over there so we plant more than we think we're going to need because we know we're going to lose a few and once one of them starts looking rough we just cut it we don't try to save it that way it hopefully won't spread to any of our other plants so we've already pruned these plants one time and added at least one clip to every plant now it's time to prune them a little more and maybe add another clip especially this plant right here now there are lots of different ways or strategies to do this 
The way I prefer to do it is to keep things on a single stem. I want nice airflow here that kind of reduces my pest pressure. But I'm sure a lot of our great subscribers will be willing to share in the comments below the way they do it. And then you can read those comments and see how you want to do it. So we've got one clip down there. We need to do some pruning here. I'm going to get that sucker out right there. There's another sucker right there. And sometimes these plants look like they want to start splitting off at the top here. And if they do that, I'll trim one of the splits. That way we keep everything on a single stem. So we got all the suckers there. Now these bottom leaves down here, they're not really giving us any fruit. They are just kind of adding to the foliage on the plant at this point. Once these leaves start getting real big or real long, I start kind of drooping down to the ground as this plant grows i will trim these bottom leaves but these aren't falling onto the ground yet so we're going to leave them for right now so that looks pretty good there we got all the suckers out of there now we just need to add one more clip which i'm going to add right there kind of keep that baby upright and sometimes once you add another clip the top you can kind of remove this bottom clip and reuse it on another plant or somewhere else so i'm going to take off that bottom clip we really don't need that anymore this top clip here should keep it upright now another thing i'll do sometimes if my string starts to get a little slack on me is i'll just twist this bamboo pole here get that string wrapped around there and it'll keep everything nice and tight keep that plant upright as it grows now let's talk about what we've been doing to keep these plants happy during this last dry spell we've been having. So it's been probably two weeks since we've had a good rain. Hopefully we're going to get one later this afternoon, but we'll just have to see. We were supposed to get one yesterday afternoon and nothing. So it's been dry around here. Thankfully we've got drip irrigation under these plants, which helps out a lot, but there's also something else we've been doing. So since it's been so dry, I've been coming out here late in the afternoon, about every other afternoon, and giving these taters here a splash, making sure they get some nice consistent watering as they're sizing up. And since I'm over here with a hand nozzle and a water hose, another thing I've been doing is watering the top of these hills on these indeterminate tomatoes. So one thing I noticed last year growing these especially when we had about a month without any rain the drip keeps the bottom of the root system pretty happy but when we have these high hills like this the drip doesn't really get to the top of that hill so i'll take my little hand nozzle and i'll just water the top of that hill every other day or so i can do it without getting a lot of moisture on those leaves there and it seems to keep those plants a lot more happy now giving the top of those hills a little sprinkle is something I kind of learned last year when it was so dry during our tomato growing season. Now last year we had pine straw around each plant which does help conserve moisture a little bit but it got so dry that there was really nothing there to conserve and once I started watering the top of those hills last year it seemed like my plant started doing a lot better. So we're going to keep doing that as long as it stays real dry around here. Hopefully the rain will pick up in the next few days. Now while doing that hand watering, another thing I've been doing is feeding the plants as well. Not every time I'm watering the top of those hills, but about once a week. Now that injector we use works pretty well to feed plants through the drip tape, but you can run into some issues when you only have a few lines of tape out there. Like in this plot, we only have four lines of tape that are 30 foot long. So there's not enough water being pulled through that injector for it to kind of siphon the fertilizer properly. So instead of injecting through the drip tape here, I've been injecting through my hand nozzle, which pulls a lot more water through it and it works a lot better. So that's how we've been feeding our plants in here lately. So when I've been feeding the plants with the injector through the little hand spray nozzle, I've been putting this stuff in the injector, this AgriThrive fruit and flour, about six or eight ounces or so. And I was adding this stuff right here, which I've used for years. Really, really like it. It's just a strain of beneficial bacteria, bacillus, and then a really long name that I'm not gonna try to pronounce. This helps out with a lot of soil borne diseases. So we really like giving the plants this stuff, but I just ran out of this stuff and I found 
this stuff right here, this bug hut stuff, and it has the same bacteria that's in that complete disease control and two other beneficial bacteria. So I'm about to try this stuff instead and I'll let you know how we like it. So besides that one runt plant there that we may have to cut the cord on, I'm very happy with our process and our procedures so far with our tomatoes this year. I think these plants are definitely benefiting from the afternoon shade they get from those pine trees there, helping them not to be quite as stressed on some of these really hot days. Now transitioning from one nightshade to another, let's check on our peppers here in this other no-till plot. So I've been doing the same thing with the peppers that I've been doing with the tomatoes, feeding them through the hand nozzle with the injector, a little bit of agarthrive, a little bit of that beneficial bacteria. And most of the plants are responding well to it. Most of them have greened up really nicely. We've got a few runts right down here. I'm not sure what's going on with those couple plants there because they've all been treated the same and only those two kind of look rough. Now I haven't sprayed these with any insecticide yet, but I'm probably gonna have to start doing that next week. We're starting to get a little bit of insect damage there. It doesn't look too bad on that plant, but it looks a little worse on that plant there. So we've got some bales, cayennes, some Pueblo chili peppers in this row. We've got a whole row of our Santa Fe grand peppers here. Now I had this one right here something just kind of chomped the top of it and i was thinking oh no we got another army worm issue but that was the only plant that got chomped i started to replace it but then it started to look like it was going to come back so i think i'm just going to leave it there and then over here is where we got the super hot stuff mostly chocolate ghost peppers there had some chocolate habaneros here lost one or two of those not really sure why still got two of them kicking right there though and it would appear that we've got a good bit of biology working in this no-till plot. Now we've also got a good bit of pigweed working right there that I need to take care of. We've got a lot of mushrooms popping up in here, which is kind of odd to me considering how dry it's been. Usually you only see mushrooms when you get a lot of rain, but I think that's a good sign. We've got some good fungal activity in that soil. So with the exception of those two chocolate habanero peppers that are kind of sticking out on the end there, we'll probably just use some cages for those. We're going to use the Florida weave trellis to support these plants just like we do our determinate tomatoes. I'm starting to see little bitty peppers on some of these plants, so they'll be getting heavy before too long. We need to go ahead and give them some help. Now, as you can see here, we've already got our five foot T posts in the ground. We put those in the ground about a foot deep, so they stick out about four foot. Should be all we need for these peppers. Now, I normally put four pepper plants between each set of posts, but the way it just worked out with my rows here, I ended up doing five pepper plants between posts. That way I didn't have to use an extra post on each row. Four is probably more ideal, but pepper plants don't get too big and heavy. They're not near as heavy as those determinate tomatoes. I think we can get away with it. So we're gonna go ahead and run our first line of string here for our Florida weave. Probably just run one line today, kind of low on the plants here, just to give them some initial support. So we'll do these just like we did our determinants. We'll weave through there, go all the way to the end of the row, and then come back. All right, so we got our first line of string ran on all those peppers there, and compared to those determinate tomatoes, we don't have to be near as aggressive about adding new lines of string here. These plants won't get near as big or near as heavy as those determinate tomatoes. A lot of times, three lines of string is pretty much all you need for one good sized pepper plant. Now I did run string down here on the end on some of those weak plants. They may not make it. If they don't make it, then we won't have to worry about stringing them anymore. But I went ahead and added the weave on those as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below. And also go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you want to see some of those determinate tomatoes, what they look like when we harvest them, check out this video right here. We grew both of those varieties last year and you can see just how big and pretty some of those red snapper and roadster tomatoes are. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.